All right, guys, uh, getting some stuff done today. Got the facade basically finished. It still needs a cap rail, but uh, just to give you an idea what I've been blathering on about for so long now. Much improved look. And uh, we'll get her painted up. I sealed it already with uh, Thompson's water seal. And it's exterior grade plywood, so it should be in good shape um, long term. And did it all with screws. So that if anything has to be worked on back there, it's easy to get the panels off to access what needs to be worked on. And I left myself oh, a couple of inches of extra room. I could have actually gotten it a little closer, which was desirable, but we've learned over several projects now that the, uh, the tighter you make pipes, the more trouble you have when you have to fix pipes. So uh, you go ahead and take that extra space in there and I'll kind of show you what it'll look like when we get a cap rail on it. I decided to go with 2x12s for a cap rail. Let me get this with one hand. Um, so 11 and a half is the dimensions of a 2x12. So that'll cover it right up to there. And that gives us, I get a wider shot, that gives us plenty of space there. And I think what I'm gonna do, because I think they look pretty nice, is they make these pots like this, and I'll do a few of those, uh, maybe two for each tank, as uh, flood and drains sitting up here. That'll give us plenty of room to get between them. So anything we need to do with the ponds with a two by 12 up here, I'll be able to just get right up on top of it and stand on it. It'll actually be easier in some ways to access the ponds once it's all done. And if we want to do any vining crops out of those, what we can do is, you know, like out here where most of the sun is, we can do something with vines right here, train it along here and back up and get it up onto that trellis. And we can still do some stuff back here, you know, like a little pocket like this. We can do basically a wicking bed that uses this uh, as, as, a, as a water source. Pretty cool stuff. Got a bunch more to do. It's uh, can't believe how hot it is for February, guys, but I'm loving it. And uh, it's a Friday. I took a Friday off. Or, sorry, it's Thursday. I took Thursday off. Ran a rewind, rewind on the podcast uh, so I can get this stuff done because tomorrow we're heading off to kill pigs. And I was losing. I lost two days this week, so uh, I wanted this all done by our uh, workshop date. We'll catch you guys in a bit. Okay, guys, continuing on with my uh, my supposed day off as I continue to work. I got my uh, my first stand built out of wood to uh, finish off the aquaponic system. So I have uh, four more to go. Uh, and that'll give us a total of nine beds in this system. And uh, I modeled these and used the same dimensions that my buddy David, who's helped me with this whole project, used on these really cool pipe racks that he welded for me. I don't have a welder, and this spring David just doesn't have the time to do uh, the rest of these racks. So I wanted to get this done. You can see he did these cool little 45s and all, and this is just awesome. And uh, David and I are going to be releasing a course in a little while, and uh, we'll be uh, giving away the plans to do these stands, both in pipe and in wood. And what I realized is, if we stuck with just his design, and I'm going to tell you, his is superior to mine. There's a lot of people out there, they don't have a welder and they don't have the ability to weld. But they can use the, the four tools that I've used to build this, and I'll show you the four tools as we go through this, uh, and that's it. And they can build this, and we'll give you a way to uh, do that when we uh, release that. You probably figure most of it out from here, but what I'm going to really uh, emphasize is that I have really figured out how to take waste to the very lowest level with this uh, stand system. So anyway, what I wanted to do was overbuild it a little bit. So it's built out of two by four, all pressure treated, but four by four legs. And then the big thing, and I'll show you them uh, up close and personal, you use lag bolts going into the four by fours for the structural lumber that's actually gonna support that weight. Because if we fill this with water, it's gonna be over 800 pounds of water. Now, it'll never be full to the top, so call it 750 pounds. That's, that's still, it's not the 800 pound gorilla, but it's the 750 pound gorilla in the room, and we don't want it coming down and collapsing. Uh, the other thing is whenever you build something kind of table-like, you always end up with kind of this kind of to and fro, and you need to stabilize it. So I came up with these really simple uh, pieces that, uh, that go on an angle to do that. It, it's fairly stable, and we're actually going to anchor it back here to this wall. I don't want to do that till I have them all built, and we get them set up to plumb them, and we have them exactly where we want. We'll make sure at least one side 
is lined up with a stud on this back wall. And this back wall is going nowhere. We got down guys in it, we got wing walls, we got gussets, this thing is solid. For most of you, because you're not sitting on a slab of rock, you can dig a hole a couple feet deep. Your sump, my sump's back there, is gonna be a lot deeper. There's really no reason to have your bed this high. It'd be much better to have your bed top about this high. If you did that, this would lower down, we would eliminate the waste from the 4x4s altogether, and you could put the 4x4s into the ground. And once you did that, you would get your extra stability, instead of from this wall, from having the 4x4s anchored in the ground. That'll all make sense in a second. So, what did I use to build this? I want to, you know, kind of emphasize the simplicity of this, because I am not a great carpenter. Sometimes people see what I build and they think I am. I'm just kind of uh, really good at figuring out how to work within the limits of my ability. So, one <clears throat> is a cordless drill. It's used for drilling holes, driving screws, and driving, uh, what do you call them? Uh, geez, lag bolts. So these are the lag bolts that I used. You see that right there? Because I don't want to be using screws, which everything else is held together with these screws. I don't want that supporting that. That's just ridiculous. So. You can see there's quite a bit more support there. So each one of these is supported by two of these and one of these on both sides. So we've got plenty of structural support there. And so we use that. Remember I said I used four tools to do this. I think you'll uh, you'll get a kick out of one of them. Let's get out of the door here. Close it up so the quail don't escape. Come over here. Another tool that I used cordless circular saw, third tool, square, and uh, my, uh, my conspiracy theorist viewers will say this is proof that I'm a 33rd degree mason I'm trying to control the world. Everybody else will know it's just a legitimate tool carpenters use. And my fourth tool, a beer. Gotta have a beer when you're doing this. All right, so the, uh, the next thing I wanna show you is this is all the, all the uh, material. I've got my little bill of materials right there written on a board. A lot of times I see people writing on things with a paper and they got a clipboard and they're trying to look at it in the wind and all. I figured a long time ago, you take a scrap piece of wood, write your bill of materials on it when you're doing multiples of one thing. It never goes anywhere. It's always there. You can always see it. Look down and make sure you're cutting the right distance. So this is all the material that I need to build the next stand. I've got my uh, short dimension uh, lumber. My long dimension lumber on my, my square, my rectangle actually. I've got my three cross pieces for the base support. I've got my angle cutters, right? These are my angle supporters. And I did these really easy. I just kind of laid them where I wanted them. And I just took a marker and drew the edges, you know, made a template basically. And then you just keep making as many of them as you need. So I need eight of those. I need eight legs, or four legs. So there's my four by fours. And then this here, I've got three um, more of my short dimension lumber and three of my angles. The reason I have that extra material already cut off out of an entire stand, plus maybe 10, 12% of the next one, that's all the waste that I have. That's it. Because of the order of cut and taking the right pieces out of the right lumber. And again, for most of you guys that would actually put these things in the ground a bit, that would be your waste. And that's a way to cut cost. Uh, people talk about reuse and recycle. The first thing to do is actually reduce the waste. And we're going to show you how to do that when we uh, release all of this information with plans and stuff. But that's where I'm at. I still got a lot of daylight left, man. The sun is, uh, well, it's way up there. Uh, so I got a few hours. I might be able to get... Uh, two or three more stands done, especially now they got a bill of materials and I can run this kind of production line style. Uh, I'll keep on it and I'll keep updating. All right, guys, as you can see, the uh, day has gotten longer and the sun is going down. I'm I'm heading out to kill pigs tomorrow, so uh, even though I probably got an hour of work left in me, I'm gonna quit and spend uh, this time with my wife because uh, when you're leaving, you should always spend time with your wife. But I did want to give you kind of a, uh, a heads up to how far I got today. I got uh, two stands built and I uh, got one with the tank in it and one with the tank out of it, which gives you a better view of 
kind of what the whole construction looks like. As you see, I've got these uh, angle boards reinforcing the structure both above and below. And the way I built this, <clears throat> I actually built uh, the long and short dimension, basically call it a table, top and bottom first, put in uh, my cross supports, which the uh, tank will actually sit on, and I flipped it upside down. And when I flipped it upside down, then I did those, flipped it back right side up and did these. And all of the stuff that was done like at the end of a board like this, this was drilled before the screws were put in. Same here where I tied into uh, this board here. These were done with a drill bit and then the screws went in. Four screws to each location. Again, four screws to each location down here with a lag bolt for that extra uh, structural support considering what one of these things weighs when you fill it. And uh, so that's got us through Two sections now again David and I are going to convert those two shallow beds to flood and drains that are going to go in the greenhouse we'll get one more of these big tanks it'll go there we'll have three deep waters and three deep wicks and I think we'll just do three more deep wicking beds because you can grow anything in a wicking bed here so that'll give us nine total beds in this system in the aviary plus four more in there which should balance the system pretty good uh, because remember, it's not just the two 330 IBCs. We'll also have three 100-gallon deep water beds there, uh, which gives us a lot we can do with fish and prawns and all kinds of other stuff. And uh, honestly, this system probably could support more grow beds, and we'll see what we can come up with as we go. But basically, when I get back next week, I got a week to build out these three, and then the following weekend... Uh, David's gonna come out. We're gonna plumb all this stuff and I got to find more of these I went to tractor supply today. They only had two of them So uh, maybe I'll order them for pickup and that way they'll have to uh, receive them for me And that'll make sure that I can get what do I need uh, two plus I need to replace that one. So I need uh, So th I need one four four more of those I need those are about 75 bucks a piece and we kind of think they're your best bang for your buck for a system like this uh, 75 bucks is, is, is pretty damn solid for a, a tank that size. It'll last longer than you will. Anyway, again, days get long. Quails have laid their eggs for the night. Quick look at how the uh, plants are progressing that we put into this deep water bed over here. Everything is looking great, man. Got some kale and some lettuce and uh, some romaine lettuce. In the back there, we got a little bit of... Uh, Watercress, you can just see how deep, like this is what it looked like when I bought it. This yellow, sorry stuff. This is the new growth coming out of my system. Look how deep green that is. It's just awesome. Uh, cilantro doing really good back here as well. Uh, watercress is actually pulling it down. We need to separate those. You've got to keep them separated. Some of you guys know that song. And uh, I'm actually using this little wicking uh, or deep water bed over here right now to, uh, to root more watercress. And I'm telling you, it's moving water. It's insane. That piece of watercress has been in there for two days. They didn't have any roots on them. When I the moving water is like magic when it comes to uh, to rooting cuttings. It's just amazing what it does. A couple of goldfish hanging. There's one of them. Goldfish hanging out in here. And uh, anyway, we'll catch up with you later. And uh, I'll take some video while we're off on our uh, pig slaughter mission.